Okay, so apparently hurricanes in the middle of the state of Georgia, that's a thing now. Most of you probably already know that last week Hurricane Helene hit just the right spot in Florida to make it all the way across pretty much the entire state of Georgia, which means getting ready for those winds and especially getting ready for power outages. Oh, and still dealing with neck injuries and a bad cold as well. Since I couldn't get to any of my other projects that I have lined up for you, all that rain and wind got me thinking about water and 3D prints. And I wanted to print out some stuff and put it outside <laughs> for various reasons that didn't work out. What I did do was make a bunch of prints and put them to the test. What's the test? Does PLA absorb water after it's been printed. Now, most of us have probably had experience with moisture as we print, or at least you've probably heard about it. And I just got curious about what happens later, you know, after a hurricane. Since a regular benchy boat doesn't really stay upright in water all that well, I couldn't find any I liked online, so I just chopped up a standard benchy to make it less top-heavy. And lowering the center of gravity, that really worked great. And now I have a small fleet of benchy skiffs. Anyway, I gave them different line heights and infill amounts. And I also thought it might be interesting to see how vase mode worked. Spoiler, uh, not great for printing, especially trying to navigate those portholes. See what I did there? Navigate. Dad joke, sorry. Can't help it. Fortunately, looks and bad jokes aren't being judged in this test. So I weighed them all before I put them in water for 24 hours. And then it was just a waiting game. The sea was calm that day, almost unnaturally calm. Like an old man sitting in front of a television in a house with no power. And yet, a storm raged inside. The boats were made to be looked upon with critical eyes trying to find fault. But could they withstand the pressure of the waters? That pressure, like a storm, threatened to overwhelm and destroy them. Like an old man sitting in front of a television in a house with no power. Waiting, the inner storm growing. Waiting, the pressure of it all. Waiting, trying to hold it in. Waiting. Only time could tell. Let's take a look at that data. So honestly, nothing was really all that surprising. I didn't expect much difference on any of the benchies, but I did expect vase mode to have a bit more absorption and they didn't disappoint. It was about a 33% increase in weight and that's fairly substantial considering how little they weighed to begin with. 0.20 and 0.08 layer heights with and without infill had virtually no change at all. Those layers just kept out the moisture and didn't provide an opening, at least in 24 hours. What really surprised me was the 0.28 layer height with and without infill. With a standard 15% infill, the 0.28 layers increased weight from 7 to 8 grams, or about 14%. Now, that's not a big deal, except the 0.28 layer height benchy that had no infill shot up from 5 grams to 7 grams, and that's a 40% increase. My guess is those wide layer lines don't create as tight a seal as the smaller layer heights, and with no infill to contend with, there was even more absorption from the inside. One thing you may have noticed is I only did two walls on the non-vase mode test. I went with the thought that more walls would just make the benchies heavier, but it would also do exactly what we want them normally to do, and that's be stronger. But for these tests, I wanted to see something going on. So class, what did we learn today? First, hurricanes are bad. Please help out if you can with one of the many relief organizations out there. 
Second, benchies just keep being fun. And last, PLA absorbs water before and after it's printed. But layer heights, walls, infill, all those great settings we use to make our prints stronger, well, they also make them more water resistant. It's not a groundbreaking study on the effects of dihydrogen monoxide on polylactide thermoplastic polyester materials, but I think it's worth noting, especially as it relates to the use of PLA with any type of food. And I'll leave that discussion for another time. I'll see you next time in the lab as we continue to learn, create, and amaze.